Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the, our webinar about the brand new SuperTech 5 Compact, uh, the SX800. Uh, before we start, let's check uh, if everything is working. And uh, please give us a comment on the chat box. Uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, can you hear and see and hear us? Uh, let us know by typing or any of the comments. So for those who are having any problems, uh, try to refresh your uh, player console by pressing the F5 button uh, or Control R on the Mac on your keyboard. And uh, best to use the Chrome browser if possible, ideally a wired connection. And if you're using a VPN, uh, please shut that off as well. Um, and to start off, uh, my name is James Hong. I'm the moderator for the event today for webinar. Uh, I'm with Siemens Canada as a business developer based out of Vancouver, Canada. Uh, for the next uh, roughly 60 minutes or so, uh, we want to give you some exciting information about our new compact uh, device. Um, for sure, obviously, we have questions. Uh, you, you are free to ask questions. We'll get to that towards the end of the webinar if we can. Uh, but if you don't have enough time to answer all the questions, we'll have that logged and ready for you. We'll be answering that offline as well. So uh, uh, as an introduction, uh, let's have an introduction from some of our key experts today. First, uh, I would like to, to introduce you to Ashutosh Singh, who will be our main speaker for today. Switch to well, we have a bit of Apologize, we'll have to, we're just doing it quickly yeah. to check on the background. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Sorry, sorry for the interruption. So, thank you, James. Um, uh, this is Ashutosh Singh. Uh, I'm working in Siemens Canada as a business development manager, and I'm operating for, from our Calgary office, uh, handling the business of our protection and automation for Western Canada. Uh, I will uh, hand over the screen to Murtaza now. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Murtuza Rupawala. I'm also operating from Calgary, Alberta. Apart from my role in the business development activities, I am also part of the customer support team for this region. Thank you. Back to Kabir now. Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi. This hope everyone is doing great so far, having a great day so far. Uh, my name is Kabir Mohammed. I'm with Siemens Canada. I'm working as the customer country business unit segment manager for Siemens electrification and automation department I'm responsible for sales, customer support and services. Uh, together, with, together with my colleagues, I welcome you to this CiproTech uh, compact uh, session, compact five session. I hope you have a great session. And with this, I probably take you to the, the first slide. The next slide. Ashutosh, can you please share your screen? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So before we begin into the, into the deep dive onto the Ciprotec Compact Phi, I, I wanted to take a moment to give a you know a, a brief background about uh, what is the division I belong to. You know, I'm part of Siemens Smart Infrastructure. Within the smart infrastructure division in Siemens Canada, there is a business unit called electrification and automation business unit, which I belong to. And it has a complete range of portfolio 
for elect electrification, automation, and distribution markets. And obviously, it's an enabler for future growth. Uh, can you go back to the previous slide, please? I haven't finished yet. Just stay there. Yeah, yeah. So on this slide, as I just wanted to take an uh, take extra moment here to give you this slide gives you the portfolio, the complete portfolio. As you can see on the slide, we have major medium voltage primary and secondary equipment, which includes low voltage distrib distribution boards, uh, components, uh, motor control center, bus bar, trunking system, distribution systems, prefabricated houses, digital and classical services, medium voltage vacuum circuit breakers or contactors, interrupters, and obviously substation automation and protection equipment. The section which I belong to, I'm part of the team is, if you uh, go to the next slide, I can tell you, I can highlight to you the protection and control piece. Yeah, this is where I belong to. This is the section we will be focusing today. This is a portfolio. Within this portfolio, we have the protection, which is a Ciprotec release. Obviously, this is a state-of-art innovative protection relays from Siemens family. They're manufactured in Berlin, in Germany. Uh, we have also offices in India. We have our CCAM automation. Uh, we have CCAM automation products, which is our substation automation products. We have the power quality, CCAM and smart communication, which means we have a power quality analyzers, power quality meters. And last, uh, which is very important in this day and age with the digitalization happening is the IoT offerings. And today with that one, this is a portfolio overview. I'll pass it on to Asutosh Singh. He's gonna walk you through on the presentation for Ciprotec Compact 5, and you hope you have a great session. Thank you, Kabir. Thank you very much. So guys, let's start our uh, webinar today for our protection relay, which is also be called uh, Universal Protection Relay. And before we go ahead, uh, you must be able to see uh, a poll on your right side of your interface. Uh, the question over there, uh, if, if it is not there, it will be coming to you very shortly. With, when was the first relay produced by Siemens? Um, any one of you, if you have any idea, we have given some options like 1980, 1940, 1960, 1910. So just you need to go and click on the poll and submit your response very quickly. Maybe uh, we can wait for a few seconds uh, to receive the responses. Just would like to know if you people are able to uh, see the poll on the right hand side of the webinar interface. We just need to select the uh, appropriate answer, whatever you, you seem correct. So we have some results. Let's go ahead with those results. <clears throat> I would say uh, majority uh, people are saying 1910 and 1940. Mm -hmm. I think we have uh, the responses from viewers. Great. So let's see, still people are voting. Okay, now, now let's see the correct answer. And that is our first slide on the topic. So this is the history of Siemens. So first relay produced by Siemens was 1910. So almost 120, 112 year. Uh, we have experience of more than 100 years of producing relays. Uh, 1910 uh, was the time when Siemens uh, filed a patent also uh, for the protection of AC, cir AC circuit. And soon after that, we started producing our relay commercially available. Uh, since then, uh, then uh, after that, our almost 60 years, electromechanical re based relays were uh, the standard at the time. And in 1985, we produced our first digital protection relay. Uh, 
uh, without communication or without any interface over there. Uh, we were doing the production settings using dip switches. And after 10 years of that, we were able to launch our first uh, digital relay with communication interface. It was like 7, let's say 600. And many of you may have used this device. Uh, then after the story goes on for the two more generation in between, and we reached 2 protect 5 in 2012. Uh, then story goes on till 2015, we sold 1.5 million protection devices in operation. Uh, globally, like a good cheese or wine, uh, also relays needs to time to reach maturity. Now, uh, today we have a new protection uh, device available, which is known as Ciprotec 5 Compact. And Ciprotec 5 Compact has experience of all those past relays. It has the algorithm uh, taken from all those uh, past matured devices, but with enhanced hardware. So. Here is our Ciprotec 5 uh, compact relay, which is also called universal protection device. So with the clear focus on medium voltage industry and infrastructure applications, we know very well that applications require simple but very high reliable protections. The name Ciprotec 5 compact states is already. It offers the protection, offer the perfect combination of our two proven Ciprotec systems, <clears throat> which is Ciprotec compact and Ciprotec 5. We have taken compact hardware from Ciprotec Compact, and we have taken modular design and plus uh, protection functions from our Ciprotec 5 series. So out of these two best worlds, we have now Ciprotec 5 Compact, uh, which is also you know universal relay. So main feature of this device, if you talk about, <clears throat> first of all, you don't need to change mul multiple part numbers. Very few selections of part numbers are available. Uh, excuse me. So this is all metal uh, robust housing uh, with very compact design on the screen with uh, graphical color display. So whatever I'm going to tell you, it's all by default available. You don't need to worry about the product selection. Screen, multicolor, graphical, even you can make uh, substation mimic on that by default available. Uh, LEDs, there are eight LEDs with multicolor options uh, with all, uh, with uh, protection interface on the front, uh, which is USB. Everyone knows that uh, we know we need uh, USB communication interface in the front. Uh, RS-232 is no more in the service. Uh, on the back side of the device, you get uh, one set of CT, one set of VT by default with uh, protection uh, with communication interface on the back. Currently, it is uh, optical interface by default available. And you have an option of selecting the device uh, with uh, two sets of uh, uh, two types of BIs and BOs. First selection is 4BI and 5BOs. Second selection is 14BI uh, and 11BO. Uh, power supply is universal. You don't need to select while the product selection. Uh, pro the power supply is ranging from DC to 24 volt to 250 volt, AC 80 volt to 265 volt. So overall, you know, uh, this is a kind of uh, device where you don't need to select much much things on that. So if you go ahead uh, before reaching to our next uh, uh, slide, I would like to bring your attention to you to the quiz available on the right side of the interface to you. So we have started getting results on that. So we would like to know the people, the, the audience available over here uh, from which field they are. So your area of working work is like engineering related thing or you are from manufacturing or assembly site work like is erection and installation or commissioning or you are in sales or marketing business so i think we have good responses right now so majority of us are from uh, engineering and standardization or erection installation and commissioning very cool so going ahead thank you very much for the responses so going ahead to next portion of this uh, slide so further ahead, we have uh, divided this webinar into three main portions. First, I will be talking about the application, uh, suitability for medium voltage uh, uh, system. Then second portion will have a, a small demo on our some future of this relay and third and last, but not the least uh, portion will be talking about uh, its retrofit and its benefit. So 
Over here, I, would, I have shown uh, a small SLD for a typical medium voltage station. As you are able to see, uh, we could have uh, incomer, incomer feeders, uh, incomers on a medium voltage section. Uh, we could have uh, an outgoing with a transformer. We could have an outgoing with a simple line feeder, or we can have mo motors in case of if we are uh, sending this uh, MV applications to any industry. Similarly, there are applications where we can have some neutral grounding transformer or a zigzag transformer or any special type of uh, distribution transformers. Plus, nowadays, we are also worrying about uh, the power factor. So we can have a capacitor bank as well. And the last, what I uh, try to emphasize, uh, it's like a line feeder for other substation. So sometimes if you are having an uh, incomer device, you may need most of the time few uh, voltage related functions like over frequency, under frequency or under voltage. Plus you need a directional protection to figure out whether, that, whether the fault is at your line side or your bus side. For simple outgoing feeders and small transfer feeders, you need overcurrent ground fault. Uh, and sometimes you need greater failure protection as well. For the motors, you need to have a dedicated motor protection over there. Uh, for, for capacitor bank, you need to have a uh, really voltage related uh, protection relay uh, and, and some features for uh, capacitor banks like uh, a differential of, uh, you know, neutral point differential, or you can say restricted ground fault protection sometimes. Uh, in case of line, dedicated line protection, uh, best way to protect a line, uh, which is medium voltage, especially uh, best way to protect to have a line differential over there. So imagine if you are having, uh, you need to choose relay for each of these feeders, uh, what you will choose? You will choose a different relay for incomers, you will choose different relay for transformer feeders, a whole different relay for motors, and of course line differential cannot be in other relays, so you need to, pro you need to choose a, a line protection relay over there with differential protections. What if I say you, you don't need to select different products over there, uh, there is a relay which can fulfill the requirement of all these protections. So you need to have only one part number. Uh, the part number I have mentioned, 7SX800-3AA51-1CA0. So this relay will have the uh, capability to protect any feeder. So you have only one type of relay to protect uh, any, feed, any type of feeder. So just to inform you people, uh, there are functions which still uh, we haven't launched, just like line differential, uh, but other than all the protections you can have from this relay. Uh, so going further on that, uh, apart from uh, this protection features, different type of protection feature in one relay, uh, we have uh, power quality also available in this device. So when you have a power quality issues in your medium voltage system, Nowadays systems are getting complicated, so you have to uh, take care about the power quality. Uh, so basic power quality, what we have in our uh, device, logging of uh, abnormal events, or PQ stand, uh, status and trends, we have already some power quality features available in this device to capture, uh, such as uh, like voltage variation, deep swell, or voltage unbalance, or uh, harmonic distortion uh, recordings. So, so imagine if you have a relay uh, which is a, which 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 can be used for any type of protection on medium voltage motor transformer or capacitor anyone and plus it has the features to record your important power quality disturbances. So how it will be a good idea to have single relay single part number for every application. And nowadays going ahead and you, everyone, every company, every organization is very, very much uh, worried about their cybersecurity things. So what we have in our cybersecurity uh, features, uh, so there are like all the, if we talk about uh, North American um, market, uh, NERC, NERC requirements are uh, defining what, what, what kind of cybersecurity should be there in your devices. So main cyber securities are, are available over here. Uh, there are some unique features which is uh, uh, especially given for this device or uh, it has taken from Cyprotec 5 uh, series uh, is like signed firmware. If some hackers wants to load a 
uh, a bug firmware to your relay to hack the device to to um, make the device tripping your feeders you have a signed firmware he will not be able to he or she will not be able to upload any other firmware written by siemens so we have a uh, special chip in our relays where we have firmware digitally signed by Siemens. Apart from that, we have some standard uh, uh, features like role-based access or change lo uh, locking. Some, like we have special uh, locks for setting change, some who is changing what settings. And those uh, setting change log will not be, cannot be deleted. So it is purely saved in, uh, so you have a better security based features available in this relay so uh, first we talked about uh, what kind of protection features is there it covers all the spectrum of medium voltage plus we have uh, good power quality features available and then we have this device cyber secure so, so what advantages we will be getting if we are choosing a universal relay 7sx 800 for our medium voltage installations it's very easy to find right now uh, there is no doubt if you have only one part number available, only one ordering code or in Siemens language, we say MLFB. If you have only one ordering code available, you have very, very uh, tiny inventory to manage. You are not going to have different relay managed for motor, different for transformer, different for capacitor point. Only one relay you have to manage. Only one type of relay uh, is there, so you have only uh, very limited uh, requirement of training or space requirement. All things are uh, like, you know, having one relay is solved. Uh, if you have like, uh, uh, this device is designed, you know, uh, we have taken features from Ciprotec Compact and like Ciprotec 4 Compact also can be said, and Ciprotec 5. So we have not given any deep switch. Like if you want to change the CT secondary from one ampere to five ampere, you don't need to change anything, just you have to uh, do the configuration using our software. There is no hardware change required. If you want to change the binding input threshold, no hardware change is required. Just you can use our configuration software to change that binding input as well. So uh, there is no device opening or handling required, so you have uh, you know, better sealed compact device. Uh, some of you people may surprise, uh, we have eight LEDs on the front, which is multicolor, and there is no LED strip over there. So LED strip, you don't need to put any paper strip over there, uh, because whatever configuration you have made for the LEDs will be displayed on your screen. So whenever your screen is in the screen saver mode, kind of, your LED uh, strip will be written on the front screen. Why we need a paper LED over there, paper strip over there. So being a compact size only almost, uh, it is one sixth of uh, uh, 19 inch. Uh, in our North American term, it is width is 2.91 inch only. Or uh, uh, European and Asian terms, we can say it is 74 mm. So having a so compact device, uh, sometimes you need to provide multiple relay in uh, control chamber of uh, your medium voltage switch gear. So you don't need to worry about that. You can put multiple relays over there. And sometimes you have a separate cabinet uh, for all the PNC requirement, protection and control requirement. So size of the PNC is also very compact uh, because uh, you can have one uh, up to six relay in one rack, one 19 inch rack. So further, uh, yeah. So we have uh, like other features, you know, inbuilt PQ we already discussed. So we have, uh, now question comes uh, from the people uh, that how we can configure this relay and how we can have very, uh, uh, you know, we need to install the software for changing the setting, for taking the logs or even for the testing. So we are going to show you our web UI feature uh, where you don't need to install any software where you don't need to worry about any license and you can have it with any PC. Uh, just for example, if you have a Windows PC with Google Chrome, install that and you have this relay, straight away you can log in in the relay and you can change the settings. You can do the protection testing. You can do the BIBO LED testing for your FAT or site acceptance test as well. 
you don't need to install any software. Your computer is already ready to work on this relay. So I would like to invite my friend Mutza to demonstrate how web UI work. Over to Mutza, please. Hello, everyone. So yeah, as Ashutosh Benson mentioned that we do, it's a completely free tool and you can use it uh, for your site test or your factory acceptance test. All you need is a computer with a web browser and your USB cable and your device, which is powered up. So right now uh, I have powered up my device. I've connected it via USB to my uh, PC. And all you need to do is enter the configured IP address here. And this is the port address to access the web UI front. So once you hit enter, uh, this page will load up and you will get the username and access. So as Ashutosh also explained, there is a role-based access possible in this. And right now it's configured for no password. So I can just hit enter and go there, right? So this is my uh, homepage, which, which you can see, uh, which is the web UI. And now I will show you the different aspects of this web UI. First of all, if you hit this tab in device, you will be able to see the device part number, the serial number, the firmware version, and the IO modules that are configured on this relay. Now you go back to the home button. You go back to this engineering tab. You go to settings, and you go to your general settings, where you can see your device settings, where you are able to change these settings also uh, from this tool. I will show you an example for uh, our protection settings. So if you go to the protection group and now you go to say overcurrent setting right now is uh, inverse overcurrent setting. It is switched on. I would like to switch it off. It will ask me the confirmation ID. You hit your confirmation ID, which is the default password right now is six times two and you press enter. Now it's here and you just hit this upload button and which is about 50 millisecond to do all the consistency check uploading and going back to the relay. So this is already configured. And if I go to check in the relay, it's already there. And I can al always check it here in my operational log. If you see this, this the entry has been made that it has been switched on and off, right? So this is one part of the settings. The other part you can always do is the monitoring part, which you have, like if you have a display page configured, you can always view the live status and everything from this display page. You can all also go and have your logs displayed here. One of the logs I already explained, that is your operational log, right? And now going back, if you want to see a runtime data, it's also possible to see all kinds of runtime data from here if you are if you want to see the protection process, it says all is connected, it's good, right? Coming back to here, measurements, if you see this measurements page, you will also be able to see the live measurements in the form of either primary or secondary or in percentage values as well. You are also able to see your fundamental values from here in form of uh, phaser diagrams as well. Now coming to say, for example, is there is a fault in the site and your guys do not have the software. How do you send those fault logs to your engineering team or your reviewing team, right? So what you just connect this, go to this web page here, go to recorder, you go to fault record and you hit this button and your record gets saved from the relay, right? So I got a fresh record here. Now I just have to select this and hit the export button and it prepares this file and it exports this to your desktop. So you can easily download the files, the fault records from here and send it back for analysis to your team if you have any downtime, uh, if you have any trip with this uh, relays, right? You While the FAT and commissioning, you can also visualize the binary outputs or inputs which are configured here and you can see their status values switching on and off right here on this web page. So overall, I would say that this is a very versatile tool, which is free, and it is has many use cases uh, in site testing. In, fa in fact, in the, in the factory acceptance test, it also saves you company's assets. It increases the availability 
and it also complements the main tool, the Dixie 5, which is your uh, engineering and configuration tool for your devices of the SIP 5 series. So that's all from my side. Back to you, Ashutosh. Thank you. Thank you, Murza. How cool it is. Like, uh, you don't need to install any software. Uh, you don't need to worry about any license uh, if you're going to work on this device. Yes, of course, uh, you should have the password. In case of Murtaza, he did not set any password, so he was able to log in very quickly. So when owner, when substation owner or, or the project engineer has given a password, uh, 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 and, and, and it, he can send anyone over there at the site uh, to take the fault record, to check the uh, event log, trip log, setting change record. Uh, even you can have the settings from, from the relay without having any software installed in your computer. So how, how, how convenient it is, you don't need to worry about uh, any specification of your computer, what you are taking to the site. Uh, how much RAM it is, what is operating system, whether which software is installed. So it, it's really helpful, primarily, I, I will say, like uh, uh, all the spectrum of your life cycle, uh, starting from your uh, fat, factory acceptance test. So during FAT, your technicians, your engineers don't need to have any software. Log in from the front port using the USB cable, you have all the relay. Even you can change the settings if it is allowed from the set configuration. So going ahead, uh, really nice. And so till now we have seen some really cool feature of this device, uh, like it is a compact with one device for all the application. Uh, one, it has all the features for any type of application you can imagine for medium voltage. Uh, and then you have a free available uh, web UI uh, and it is web UI is available with all the relays with uh, with all there is no all the relays you can say for say protect 5 compact only one part number is there and it's available by default so you don't need to worry about the firmware also on which firmware which function is available so going further to our uh, second portion or third portion of our presentation today so uh, suppose that was the discussion about uh, if you are using this relay for uh, greenfield application for a new switch here. Suppose you are going to uh, use this relay uh, for retrofit. So what kind of benefits we have, uh, what kind of uh, differentiator we have, which we have uh, if you compare with any other product in the market. First of all, I would like to uh, bring your attention over here uh, to keep in the mind to support for uh, retrofittings, uh, we have introduced the ordering of this relay uh, with ter a terminal of ordering of these relays uh, before ordering before ordering of whole device. For example, over here in the picture, if you can see, uh, we can order your CT terminals, your VT and control terminals before we order the relays to the site. So what is the benefit of that? Uh, you can complete your wiring uh, before changing the device, actual device in the field. So here all these CT terminals and control terminals are pluggable terminals, uh, which we don't need to open a screw to change your CT terminal, for example. So you can purchase the terminal and you complete the pre-wiring and then you can go ahead to replace the complete device. Uh, all these uh, terminals are snap-on fix. So you just push the terminal in, towards the relay and it get fixed automatically. So you can have a little bit doubt, suppose if I'm wiring the CT first and relay is not available, whether my CT is open at that time. No, your CT is not open. Uh, we have designed this CT uh, uh, terminals in such a way, all your conversion of your current transformer is happening inside the terminal. So it is just not a terminal. Uh, it has inbuilt CT inside that. So uh, it's not gonna, uh, you know, now open your circuit of CTs. So we have really very easy installation uh, retrofitting options available over here. Uh, uh, so uh, just uh, just uh, just it's good to mention that we have all our CTs uh, connection with ring type terminals and control and VT with uh, pin type terminals over there. 
So going further uh, about the communication port, uh, we have by default uh, optical communication port available on the back side of the relay, and which has uh, IEC 61850 communication available on the back. Uh, with its with like uh, Modbus, TCP, and other small serial communication protocols are also available. Uh, there are small developments still going on, uh, where you can see at the middle we have a RJ45 connector available, so which we have reserved for our serial communication. Your serial communication uh, for Modbus uh, or DNP3 communications, uh, you know, um, uh, our conventional communication protocol available in the market uh, with medium of RS-485. Uh, so it is still in development and very soon it will be launched. Uh, to save this space, to have a compact design, we given we have given the RJ-45 terminal uh, instead of RS, uh, you know, DB9 type of uh, terminals over there. So, So what we have in offering uh, for our customers, uh, um, uh, briefly, so apart from just having this relay, uh, what also you get, uh, we have uh, additional things for our customers benefit. So we have industry mall available uh, where you can go, uh, you can have a login, or you can apply for the uh, account with Siemens and you, and you can get, you have access of all the products from Siemens where you can go and create your own device and you can place the order. It is kind of uh, uh, Amazon or any other uh, uh, shopping tool on the web. So you have access to all the Siemens products over there. Uh, you have webinars, trainings, uh, presentations, uh, learning sessions from uh, Siemens actually. So we have audience over here from all over the world, and uh, you and these facilities are available uh, for most of the reason. I would say I think every reason uh, where we have industry mall uh, webinars, trainings, and uh, direct one-to-one uh, -one trainings are also there for customers. So, so what's the next? So, if I uh, roll back to the uh, features of this relay, uh, you have very compact device uh, with the protection functions available uh, for any type of, of application for medium voltage. Uh, for and communi With communication, power quality uh, features and inbuilt cybersecurity things. So what is the next? So there are feature I would like to drag you to the uh, our application slide. Uh, just a second here. Yeah, so on, on this page, uh, what kind of uh, functions are there which is not yet launched? So I would say, uh, frankly, that line differential is in the way uh, is on on its way to to get launched with device. So you can have uh, line differential uh, using uh, communication interface, protection interface on the back side of device uh, that is still uh, to be launched and. RS-485 communication on the back board using RJ-45 connector. That is still pending to be launched. Uh, I think one question can come to anyone's mind. Suppose we have only one part number. So like uh, if I repeat the part number 7SX800-3A511CA0, uh, how we can differentiate which relay is going to be used for motor protection and which relay is going to be used for transformer or capacitor bank or whether it has Modbus communication or IC61 at 50 communication. So while you are going to order this relay, uh, apart from this part number, uh, there is a simple function points required to enable those functions, different type of functions. So apart from this hardware code, what we can say MLFB, or you can say ordering code or part number. After this, just you need to add the function point option. And that is very well defined and available on our uh, industry mall website where you can go and you can design your own own product. Uh, 
it's a kind of uh, one device with different type of features available. So going further ahead, So yeah, that's uh, the way I explained. Uh, we have our line differential uh, on the way. And nowadays, uh, most of our medium voltage users out there in the field, they are talking about uh, arc protection. So very soon, we will be having arc protection available, um, I believe, using fiber optic. So we will be having sensors uh, for our medium voltage uh, to connect to this relay so that uh, whenever any arc produced inside the switch gear, uh, relay will give, give a trip command quickly. Uh, fast, quick uh, re removal of the faulty system from the system, uh, faulty system from your power network uh, with our protection soon will be available with this device. So imagine if you have a relay and you have only one part number and that relay is capable to be used for motor protection or line differential or transform or a capacitor bank or any type of protection for your medium voltage assets. And that relay is, again, by default, have uh, uh, cyber security inbuilt, power quality uh, measurements available in that. And it is so compact for your retrofitting needs. Plus, we have detachable terminals on the back so that you can, uh, you can very well do a retrofit work. Uh, so how cool that device will be um, in your uh, assets or in your, uh, in your customer's asset. So uh, I would like to uh, invite uh, our audience for um, any question, answer, any question or any doubt or any further things, uh, uh, any, any, any more information if needed. Uh, I will suggest uh, my friend James. Uh, if you have any uh, questions already coming up, uh, maybe uh, we can try to answer those. Sure. Uh, so we got a few questions, uh, more than a few questions, actually. So uh, this one, Ashtosh, is for you. And um, one of the questions was, um, are all functions available on one part number? Um, do clients or other uh, future clients need to order any extra functions at the beginning of the process? Oh, yeah, that's a very, very nice question. And um, if this question would have not been asked, I would have answered uh, anyway. So yes, you are purchasing one part number. So that part number or that ordering code is going to define your capability of the device in terms of your binary input output, uh, number of binary input output, or uh, which type of communication you want. And, and you have a basic uh, feeder protection already available over there. Uh, for example, ground fault, overcurrent, uh, and th those protections are already available. Uh, suppose this release customer wants to use it for motor differential, uh, or sorry, motor protection. So what you have to do, you have to order some function point with that. Function point is a kind of your digital wallet. Uh, if you purchase, suppose, 100 function points, so you can use uh, functions which has weightage up to 100 function points. So uh, for example, I will give you, if you have purchased a basic device, which is a part number without any function points, so you have a basic transformer or basic feeder protection available. And you need to, if you want to add some motor features, motor protection on that, just you need to add 40 function points, either at the time of purchase, or if you have already purchased the device, then you can purchase function points and you can install in the relay as well. So after purchase also, you can enhance the device for any other protection functions or at the time of ordering, you can purchase. So part number is going to be same and, and function points will be added uh, to have uh, more functions like motor protections. Okay, thank you. Um, Another question is, uh, will the uh, 7XX800 be compatible with our um, full line, the CProtect 5 uh, versions, part numbers, uh, such as an existing line differential uh, relay? So uh, as we have not launched the different line differential protection yet, 
So uh, we don't have exact answer for that. Uh, but I can give you uh, an example. Uh, your, if you have used Cyprotec 4 uh, line production relays, for example, 7SD610, and if you have a Cyprotec 5 uh, line production relay, uh, like 7SD85, both relay can communicate to each other. So there is no big difficulty for us to launch um, the compatibility compatibility between 7XS 800 and 7SD8586 anyone. Uh, but we cannot say when it will be available uh, because yet we have not given the line differential. So, but my opinion, yes, we should be able to do that. Yeah, even if we can do with the separate four to five, yes, why not? Uh, say from separate five compact to separate five. We should be. Thank you. Um, another question is, uh, was the power quality functionality available on the previous version of Supertech 4 compact? So nice question. So some of the enhancements are made over here. As we already discussed that power, we have taken the features from our older proven gen generation of the relays. So yes, we have taken uh, those uh, power quality functions from Cyprotec 4 Compact, uh, but we have also some enhanced feature available over here. So yes, we have, can say we have copied some functions from our older generation. That's what we declared. So we have, yes, uh, copied from older also, and it is also have having some enhanced uh, features as well. Okay. Um. Another question is, um, uh, there's a question about uh, whether, I, I guess this user is familiar with our, our other software, the Dixie 5, which is used for our programming, but uh, um, do you need the Dixie 5 software in addition to the web UI? So, you need Dixie 5 software for to make the configuration, yes. But to use the web UI, you don't need any software. Once Relay is configured, uh, with Dixify software, uh, and you have given permission to user to use the web UI uh, with your Dixie 5, and then that relay can be accessed by any person, any type of computer using any uh, Internet Explorer or Google Chrome. They don't need to have the software installed in their PC. So without installing Dixie 5, yes, you can use web UI. Uh, Prior to that, you should have the permission already granted from the user who has Dixie 5. Okay, thank you. Uh, questions are coming. Um, yeah. Another one is the uh, the F1, F2 ports. Uh, can they run two different protocols uh, simultaneously? Not yet, <laughs> not yet. Uh, but we will take that as a, as a feedback. So currently, uh, our device is running uh, one protocol only. So maybe in future we can launch. I, I don't have any answer for that. I don't see any roadmap right now. Uh, but we will take it as a feedback. Um, another question was, uh, will this relay have the uh, availability to use? I, I believe a user is asking whether it can run process bus. No, simply no. Uh, uh, we don't know about whether on the customer's demand we will work on process but with this device, uh, but not now. Okay, thank you. Yeah, process buses actually will be uh, addressed with our regular SIP5 uh, relay. That's true, yeah. Uh, another question. Oh, um, on one of the uh, slides, there was an 87N shown. Mm -hmm. um, does it have the, um, does our SIP5 compact have the low impedance REF? Yeah, right. yeah so a low impedance REF is already available with this relay. Uh, so sometimes you need it for your, um, you know, uh, grounding transformer, or sometimes you need to have a current differential, low, neutral current differential for uh, you know capacitor banks sometimes so yes we have that possibility with it yeah okay um, 
There's a few questions that we we'll probably need to kind of uh, answer mm -hmm. offline as well. Um, so I can see some questions like, uh, um, can there be several pages uh, on the Mimic? Uh, if you see the display, uh, that is one of our basic feature for our Product 5 uh, platform, uh, that we can have multiple Mimic pages. So that shouldn't be a difficulty for with this relay as well. And and, and yeah, it, it it is possible. Okay, I'm just going through a few more questions. Uh, and then everybody, feel free to still answer questions or. Uh, Put your questions in the comments. Uh, if we capture them there, we will be able to answer them offline. Um, mm -hmm. If we can't get to all of them, so feel free to answer. Uh, put those questions in there. Um, and and I would like also to uh, I would really uh, love to mention and encourage our audience today. Uh, if you are not getting you you are not able to frame or you are not getting the correct question in your mind right now. Uh, you can uh, drop us uh, an email uh, to to connect with you to uh, to solve those questions and uh, suppose in any case if you need uh, for more deeper technical presentation kind of a technical training or uh, you want to discuss some other topics which is not yet in your mind you can contact us back also and i believe there should be a poll on the right hand side of your interface and you can give your consent uh, to uh, to enroll yourself to be contacted by Siemens back. Uh, that topic, that can be any topic, like uh, you want to understand, uh, you have to have better understanding of that product, you want to have a training of that, or suppose you want to understand the pricing. I, I, I'm able to see some questions about the price are also available over there. So if I'm not wrong, James, uh, um, we will be having uh, those contacts uh, from the customers who are giving consent and we can arrange uh, our Siemens representatives to contact back them. Yeah, it's um, again, very important to um, give your consent so that we have users joining us from around the world. So uh, certainly contact your local sales office in sales office and they'll be uh, able to provide you a, the latest update in terms of pricing as well as lead times for, for the SIP5 compact. Excellent. Um, we have time for maybe a couple more questions, Ashtosh? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, we can have, uh, yeah. Um, I got maybe a couple more just kind of came in. Um, does this relay have the RGB option for time sync? Eric B, uh, I don't have the answer right now. Uh, maybe some of us have the answer, uh, any one of my friend. Uh, from what I remember, uh, Eric B is still not available. And I don't see uh, exactly the plan to have Eric B because we have a LAN port already available on this device uh, for the um, you know, NTP uh, time synchronization. Uh, but if I can be wrong because I'm not 100% sure Eric B is there or not. If, if any one of our friend knows it, maybe Murtaja. Uh, not right now, Ashutosh. Uh, maybe uh, that question, we can take it offline and check with HQ also if there is a roadmap for this. Okay, sure, sure. So uh, this is the another question what we have and, and we can contact the person directly or our uh, Siemens representative from, from their region can contact them. Okay. Yeah, and um, no, well, I guess uh, we got a few more questions, but I don't think we can get to all of them. So uh, I know we're reaching pretty much our time limit of an hour. So uh, I'd like to just kind of close off and say, uh, thank you everybody for joining uh, this webinar uh, from around the world. So wherever you are, uh, have a good uh, morning, afternoon, evening. And uh, this session is recorded, as I mentioned before. And uh, as long as you're registered, you will get an email saying um, when the recording is available, you'll be able to download that. 
and uh, certainly reach out to your uh, respective sales offices as well to uh, reach out for any further information if you're not based in Canada. So with that, um, thank you very much, everyone, and um, take care.